My name is Katherine Anderson. I provide leadership over several supportive services, including naturopathic support. I received my naturopathic degree from the Canadian College of Naturopathic Medicine in Toronto and completed my MBA at Oklahoma State University. Additionally, I received certification in functional medicine. I have over 15 years of experience working in an integrated oncology hospital environment. Before we get started, let me just share that all material provided today is for informational and educational purposes only and is not intended to provide you with medical advice. This presentation is not a substitute for medical care, nor is it a substitute for consultation with a healthcare professional. Please discuss all medical and nutrition questions with your healthcare provider. So what are dietary supplements? Federal law defines dietary supplements as products that you take by mouth, such as a tablet, capsule, powder, or liquid. They're meant to supplement the diet and they have one or more dietary ingredients that include vitamins, minerals, herbs, other botanicals, amino acids, enzymes, tissues from organs or glands, or extracts of these. They're labeled as dietary supplements, not drugs. So regulation of dietary supplements is covered under the Dietary Supplement Health and Education Act of 1994, otherwise known as DSHEA. Manufacturers are also responsible for determining that any representations or claims made about products are substantiated by adequate evidence to show they are not false or misleading. The FDA is responsible for taking action against any unsafe dietary supplement product after it reaches the market, not before. The FDA accomplishes this by monitoring safety literature, dietary supplement adverse events reports, and product information such as labeling, claims, package inserts, and accompanying literature. The FDA issues regulations establishing current good manufacturing practice requirements, otherwise known as CGMPs, for dietary supplements. The FDA has issued a final rule establishing requirements for the production of dietary supplements, requiring certain activities in the manufacturing, packaging, labeling, and holding of dietary supplements, this ensures a dietary supplement contains what it is labeled to contain and is not contaminated with harmful or undesirable substances. These undesirable substances could include things like pesticides, heavy metals, or other impurities. This requires certain activities to ensure the identity, purity, quality, strength, and composition of dietary supplements. This is a significant step in assuring consumers are purchasing the type and amount of ingredients declared. Dietary supplements are regulated differently than drugs by the FDA. The FDA can only take action against contaminated or misbranded dietary supplements after the product is in the market. The labels on dietary supplements cannot claim the product can diagnose, treat, cure, mitigate, or prevent any disease. Claims like these are only permitted for drugs. However, some types of claims related to health or the way that the product affects the structure or function of the body may appear on dietary supplement labels. So even with all of the FDA regulation and the rules and responsibilities for manufacturers, there's still a lot of concern as it relates to dietary supplement quality. There are resources you can go to to check for that quality. Things such as consumerlabs.com, Labdoor, NSF, and a number of other resources. Dietary supplement authenticity, purity, and potency are often compromised. 25% of all products tested by consumerlab.com were inauthentic, impure, subpotent, and or mislabeled. It is difficult for consumers to determine dietary supplement quality by simply looking at a label. Cancer Treatment Centers of America has created a vendor quality assurance program to ensure that dietary supplements provided to our patients are authentic, safe, and high quality. We choose brands that are labeled with NSF International, US Pharmacopeia, Underwriters Laboratory, or Consumer Lab Seal. These verify the product actually contains the ingredients that the label says it does, and the product doesn't have any potentially harmful ingredients. Be wary of supplements made outside of the United States. Many are not regulated and may have toxic ingredients. The FDA has a number of warning letters that they will send out to companies. 
One example is an omega-3 fatty acid supplement with disease claims on the package label website. The FDA issued this warning letter against Omega-3 Salmon Oil Plus. The product's website contained a disease claim that said in just over two months, my cholesterol dropped 49 points and my triglycerides fell over 100 points. The FDA characterized the product as a new drug and stated that this new drug had not been approved on the basis of data submitted by the drug sponsor to demonstrate the drug is safe and effective. A similar warning letter was issued against a product where the label read, studies indicate that the omega-3 fatty acids found in walnuts may help lower cholesterol. The amount of scientific evidence we have on dietary supplements varies widely. Studies have found some dietary supplements may have benefit, such as melatonin for sleep, curcumin to reduce inflammation, ginger in addition to anti-nausea medication to help manage nausea related to cancer chemotherapy. Also, dietary supplements can be important when there are normal deficiencies found in the diet, such as B vitamins, fiber, omega-3 fatty acids, and even iron. Other studies have shown little or no benefit, such as vitamin E for prostate cancers. Other studies potentially show negative interactions, such as biotin with common laboratory tests. It's well known the herb St. John's wort, which is sometimes used for depression, can make many drugs, including cancer drugs, less effective. Also, some high-dose antioxidants may interact with radiation therapy. Dietary supplements may interact with your medications, supplements, or pose risks if you have certain medical conditions or are having surgery, chemotherapy, or radiation therapy. With surgery, be aware that certain dietary supplements may increase the risk for bleeding or affect your response to anesthesia. Many dietary supplements haven't been tested in human clinical trials. Before using any dietary supplement, talk with your healthcare providers to make sure that all aspects of your care work safely and effectively together. So let's talk about a few dietary supplements. You've probably heard about probiotics that are commonly found in yogurt. Probiotics are live microorganisms intended to provide health benefits when consumed by improving or restoring the gut flora. Probiotics use should be evaluated on a case-by-case -case basis considering the risks like potential for a decreased response to cancer immunotherapy and the benefits, which are not well detailed in the literature. We recommend considering the use of probiotics in patients with pre-existing gastrointestinal indications like irritable bowel syndrome and inflammatory bowel disease, or for prevention of diarrhea that is not related to C. difficile when initiated on antibiotic treatment for acute bacterial infection. This excludes patients on antibiotics for prophylaxis. Fish oil can help with weight stabilization and increasing lean muscle mass in oncology patients with weight loss. Dietary supplements containing EPA, up to six grams of EPA a day, and the medical food supplements containing fish oil of one to two grams a day, help with weight stabilization and increasing lean muscle mass. Vitamin D is a fat-soluble vitamin that is found in fatty fish and synthesized in the skin under the influence of ultraviolet light or the sun. The most common, widely known function of vitamin D is to regulate serum calcium and phosphorus levels for normal mineralization of bone. It is also involved in immunomodulation and cellular differentiation. Vitamin D deficiency is common and is associated with increased health risks for example, infections and some cancers. 25 hydroxy vitamin D3 levels can be tested in the blood for deficiency and help determine the need for supplementation. Calcium is a main structural element in bone and plays many roles in cells, including muscle contraction, blood clotting, cell signaling, and enzyme reactions. Adequate calcium may help prevent osteoporosis and bone fracture. It also may help lower blood pressure and is associated with a reduced risk of colorectal cancer. Higher calcium intake may increase the risk of cardiovascular events and prostate cancer. Calcium may interfere with absorption of iron, zinc, and magnesium, which is why it's important to not take these dietary supplements together. 
Always tell your physician or healthcare providers if you are taking dietary supplements. Unfortunately, surveys show that many people with cancer don't tell their healthcare providers about their use of dietary supplements. In fact, they share this information only about 15% of the time. Unproven products or practices should not be used to replace or delay conventional medical treatment for cancer. Dietary supplements bought from stores or online may differ in important ways such as quality and dose from products that are tested in studies. Some dietary supplements also may contain prescription drugs not allowed in dietary supplements or other ingredients that are not listed on the label. Some of these ingredients may be unsafe. For example, the FDA has found prescription drugs including things like anticoagulants such as warfarin, anticonvulsants such as phenytoin, and others in products being sold as dietary supplements. So if you're meeting with your doctor or healthcare provider, you wanna make sure you're asking the right questions, such as, how can this help me? Are there any reasons why I should not use it? How much should I take? Do you know of studies that prove it helps? Do you have information that I can read about? What are the risks and the side effects? Will this interfere with my cancer treatment? How long will I be on the therapy? What will it cost? So in wrapping up with final thoughts, it's important to assess the safety of dietary supplements, the quality, the risk versus the likely benefit, the cost versus the likely benefit, you need to be empowered and take charge of your health. Talk with qualified and licensed healthcare providers about any dietary supplement use. Together, make shared and well-informed decisions with trusted healthcare providers. Thank you for viewing this presentation. I hope you found it enjoyable and educational. For more information, please visit cancercenter.com.